we're here. <laughs> Hi, Alexander. Welcome to the podcast again. <laughs> Hi, Jen. I'm so, so excited to chat with you today. So excited. It took us a few technical difficulties, but we are here. I yeah. <laughs> have been watching your channel ever since I was gearing up for a move. I was basically living in a dungeon, tiny, tiny apartment where it felt like anything I did, just like nothing was going to help. And I was living in 300 square feet with my boyfriend for the first time. We moved upstairs in the building. It's still like the same amount of square footage, but it feels so much bigger. And I just binged all of your YouTube videos. And like, you could see we hung up sconces. There's a chandelier, <laughs> like you empowered us to be able to turn our rental into a home. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you for saying that. I, um, it really means so much to hear that. And yeah, I'm, I'm so happy to hear that your space looks great, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I wanted you to come on initially just because I, like I said, was so empowered by just understanding that I actually could make a rental into a home. And there's so many things that you can do that we kind of just assume we can't do, but I listened to your Ted talk and realized you have actually a really inspiring journey as well. And like, I want to get into home decor, but I kind of want to talk about the journey first from kind of like layoff to like, I don't even want to call you a YouTuber. I feel like you're a full on producer or host. <laughs> like you have your own full on show and production and I kind of want to talk about like the in-between there. Like you didn't just get laid off and then all of a sudden you're crushing it on YouTube and like making the big bucks. Like you had to grieve a dream job. And then I just feel like there were so many moments along the way that you mentioned in your story where you were doubting yourself. Could you kind of touch on how you got past the doubt of like, how am I going to ma actually make money doing this on my own? Yeah, for sure. It's, um, it's definitely, you know, a long story with, with lots of different parts to it. But I think, you know, when I worked, I worked in publishing for many years and it's kind of how I started. Like I interned and then I got a full-time job at this magazine and I, I loved it. Like I felt for the first time, like okay, I'm doing what I want to do. And I, growing up and in university, I really was very driven. I, I, I knew I wanted to do something and have an impact and just do something I loved. Like that was always really important to me. And so when I, you know, landed this job at this magazine and started working my way up and starting, you know, a video series, I felt, I don't know if you've ever felt this feeling, I'm sure you, you feel this now, but just like I was doing the thing that I always, I didn't even realize I wanted to do. And I found it and there was resources at my fingertips. You know, there was videographers, there was editors. I was producing and hosting the show, but I just, it felt easy and exciting. And when I got let go, I felt like everything had been kind of taken away from me because it had like, sorry, that was my kitten. Oh, it's okay. We got also, a new kitten and she's, <laughs> she's like in, insane. Like if she can join the like interview, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I was going to um, say was also, it's not just like, oh, you were finally doing something you loved and were passionate about, but you were also being paid to do it. Like you weren't having to pay exactly. to do it, which is usually exactly. how it goes, like investing and doing it yourself. Exactly. And that's exactly what it felt like. It was like, okay, I'm getting paid to do this job it's hard work and, you know, I'm working around the clock, but, but everything is there for me. You know, um, I can go down the hall and ask the videographer if she can shoot tomorrow. Um, you know, and I can have an editor ingest all the footage and edit it. Like it was, it was hard obviously, but like, but easy, easier mm -hmm. than doing it myself for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and I, rem I remember at the time, one of my best friends, Katie, she worked at the magazine with me and she, said to me, you should be doing this by yourself. Like you should be doing this on your own. And I was like, no way. Like, I don't want that. I, I never wanted to be an entrepreneur. I didn't have dreams of owning my own business. I loved the simplicity of someone paying me every two weeks and getting me getting to do what I loved. So, um, when I got let go, I knew that I had to keep going, but I didn't know how I, 
YouTube, especially home decor YouTubers, there's a lot of costs, you know, it's not like I can just sit in my bedroom and record a makeup video. It's like a full on production. And when we're shooting, we ask the homeowner to leave. We have a crew, we have lights, we have equipment. And I had no idea how I was going to, you know, pay for a $6,000 camera. And so I guess that's to answer your question. That's kind of where the doubt came in of like, okay, this has been kind of handed to me up until now. And now I have to figure out how to do it on my own. And I think a lot of people get really stuck on that moment. Like, how do I actually do this? And where do I even start? Um, and I, I felt the exact same way. Where, like, did you ever think in your mind, oh, I should start applying to other jobs or you instantly got laid off and you were like, okay, well, next step, I'm doing this on my own. I love this question because for a while I didn't really know what was going to happen. And because, you know, it was a mass layoff. So there was almost a 90 of us or more than 90 of us laid off. And obviously everyone's competing for all of those jobs. And it's funny because I actually, it didn't even start applying for jobs the week after. Like, I think subconsciously I knew that I didn't want that for myself. So I wasn't really looking, but there was a couple opportunities that came up and I'll, okay. I'm going to tell you a story that I don't think I've ever told anyone, but one of the really exclusive, (laughs) (laughs) one of the really big home decor magazines reached out to me in Canada and they asked me to come to this interview. I was okay. This is so embarrassing. I was 30 minutes late for this interview, which is like, so not me. That's like, so disrespectful, really not a way you're going to get a job. And I remember sitting in this boardroom. So not only had I wasted her time, I was totally stuck in traffic. Like it actually was out of my control. Um, but I remember thinking like, if I really wanted this job, I would have been an hour early. I would have been standing outside waiting. I knew so I was sitting in front of Cause I feel yeah, like we've all I, been there. We're like, we're like, was this subconsciously just us not caring as much as we feel totally. we should? Yeah. And that's so not me too. Like I care a lot about what I do. I care a lot about people's time and, you know, I just, it, it was kind of out of character. So I go to sit down with her and she's basically kind of offering me a job, like kind of like well, what are you doing? Like, are you interested in working full time? And I remember just being like, no, (laughs) I showed up at this interview and it was like, actually, no. And I think it was at that moment where there was part of me that obviously felt like I had to show up to this interview because I'm like, well, maybe I should jump back into the corporate world and work, you know, for a magazine again. But then there was this other part of me that when I showed up, it was kind of very clear to me, like, no, I'm making money doing this not a lot of money, but I'm making money. I'm seeing, you know, that things are happening and that there's a bit of traction. And so actually, no, I don't want to work for this huge decor magazine. Um, and that was kind of the moment I felt like, okay, you know, I want to do this myself. I feel like you've really followed your gut. And I think we've all been there where this big opportunity is in front of us. And it's almost like a test from the universe where it's like, what are you going to do? And like, let your parents, for example, would be like, are you out of your mind? But that's when you know, you're really following your gut. So after that, were you like, oh, I like excited, inspired, ready to take, you know, your own thing to the next level? Or were you like, what the hell am I doing? Or both? I think I, I I think both. I think like, I don't think I ever really, I don't know how to explain this eloquently, but I don't think I ever really let myself think, okay this is great. And this is what I'm going to do. Like, I kind of was always just like, let's get to the next thing and let's get to the next thing. And let's just kind of see if this is going to turn into something. And I think as an entrepreneur, you never really feel settled, right? Like I don't wake, I mean, I wake up every day feeling like, okay, I have a, I have a team of people. I, I take myself seriously. I know what I'm doing, but there's always this thing in the back of my mind. That's like, you know, what if the brand deals don't come in? What if people stop watching my channel? Um, It's always nerve wracking, but I would say like only, you know, up until last year, 
I think it was like last year was really when I was like, okay, you know what, this is going somewhere and um, I feel somewhat secure. What's also really cool about today's day and age is like your YouTube channel now it acts as this crazy major resume. So if you ever, God forbid, really needed to like get a job, you could probably land something even bigger than you could have (laughs) before you started your YouTube channel. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's funny that you say that because, um, I don't have a LinkedIn profile (laughs) because I was like, I don't really need a LinkedIn profile. And also there was a moment can't remember what precise moment it was, but there was a moment where I kind of realized, oh, I'm never, I'm never ever going to go back to working for someone like you as an entrepreneur, I feel like you kind of have this shift where you're like, I've done this for so long and I've made my own money and I've built this own team that it would be so bizarre to go work for someone else. And like, I should never say never, who knows what's going to happen. But I think naturally as an entrepreneur, when you're starting a small business, you just kind of wake up one day and and feel like, okay, I'm in it for the long haul. Like this is kind of it. And that was a really weird and scary moment for me because like I said, I never wanted to do this. I never wanted to be the the owner of my own company. It felt really stressful to me for, for a while, but things just kind of take time and like settle out over, over, you know, a period of time. Yeah. And it reminds me of something you said in your TED talk. Cause of course I listened to it. Your TEDx talk. <laughs> I, you were mentioning just this feeling and maybe it was probably towards the beginning. I'm sure where eventually it's like, maybe you were six months in or something and you were like, maybe this was stupid. How am I ever going to make money? And like, how did you almost get that faith to keep going when you're at a point where I feel like for a while, it's like, oh, I'm in this for the long haul. So I'm just going to keep going and going and going. And then you might be, it could be six months in, it could be years in. And you're like, I know I'm going to keep going, but obviously there are sprinkles of doubt along the way. Cause we're all human where you're like, what if this doesn't end up working out? And then you end, how do you kind of hold on to that faith or how did you hold on to that faith that like in those moments of doubt? just like, how did you build that trust in yourself that this is going to work out? Yeah. I love your, your questions are so great. Um, Thank you. I, (laughs) I, I feel like, so that moment was very visceral and, and I'll always remember it because I knew that I had to build a team in order to keep making these videos home decor. Like I mentioned doing a home decor YouTube show is truly like doing an HGTV show. You need contractors, you need um, equipment, all of those things. And you need Graham. <laughs> you need Graham. Yeah, you need a Graham. <laughs> just to just to like even produce the sheer volume of makeovers we're doing. You know, a lot of people have a, a lot of things to say. About, anyways, but, but we could talk about like negative <laughs> comments. But there's this like tiny part of the internet that is like, you know, whatever. It, we'll get into that yeah. after, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, to just produce the sheer volume of, and, and to make AdSense and to get brand deals, like you need to constantly be creating content. And I knew that early on because I'd been doing it at the magazine for a year. And I had this moment where I was like, this is so stupid. Like, why did I ever think I could afford to hire a team of people? I was running out of my severance. I just, I was I just had this kind of moment of like, this is not going to work. And I got a call the next day, as I mentioned in my TED talk from my um, agency, and they had like landed me a brand deal that was going to last me six, six months, like six plus months. And I think that kind of how truly up until now, like even now, I just kind of take it project by project. And in the early days, I took each project and I used it as an opportunity to hire people, to get an office, to grow my team. And I've truly poured all of the money that my business has made back into the business. And I think that's another thing that people are really scared to do. Like I have paid myself the bare minimum. I really truly have poured it all back into my business. And I think that's kind of in the early days, how I started to trust myself that I could do it. It was like landing campaigns. And then I landed a show and then I landed this and then I landed that. And 
used all of those things as, as an opportunity to grow my business, knowing that if I grew my team, that was going to bring in more opportunities. To sum it all up, I trusted that I had a goal and I've always seen the kind of end goal and I'm still working to like, I'm not by any means at the end, but I had this very clear path of like, okay, I want to do this next. And then I want to do this next. And I know this is going to make my business more money. And I am excited about that, like doing products or having a TV show. And that kind of keeps me going because I'm working, I'm constantly working towards something. I can't wait to see you on HGTV. Like I <laughs> will be the first person tuning in, but I feel like the hardest part, especially as someone who tries to make it as a content creator in any realm is you're trying to focus so hard on just creating the content and for you, like creating these makeovers and doing the thing, building the community, whatever it is before you even think about making money. But I feel like what was even I think this is so hard for everyone, but probably especially for you, because you probably needed to invest a lot more money than like most people do that are just, you know, picking up their phone. Like you said, making a makeup review, you kind of just have to invest in some makeup. I feel like the hard part is not thinking about how you're going to make money yet. And you're yes. just trying to throw yourself into the content. But for you, that was probably even amplified times 10 because you needed to pay, you needed to fund people's lives and salaries. Yeah, exactly. And even now, like I, you know, I'm reaching a point where hopefully in the next couple of years, I'll be able to pay, pay myself, you know, like a, a great salary. And, but like, I, I felt like I took the opportunity that I knew I had in front of me. I knew that I had to build the team and I had to put all that aside. And I think that's really hard for people to be like, well, I'm paying this person when I could be paying myself. Like, I think that's hard to, it was hard to wrap my head around at first, yeah. but again, like, I just know that there's an end goal. And I know that there's going to be a time where I can reap the benefits of the business and the company. Just my cat hanging off. Yeah. <laughs> um, and again, like that's kind of constantly what I'm working towards. It's not paying myself immediately or, um, I'm in it for the long haul, right? It's, it's my business. And yeah. obviously there's times where I'm like, what if it just ends and I, and I don't have anything to show for it, but that's so ridiculous because there's already so much to show for it. And I think, you know, one thing we talked about early on just in our conversation in the last 15 minutes is trusting your gut. And one thing my mom has always said to me when I was little, she always told me like, trust your gut. She said that to me over and over again. And she would explain to me when I was little, like that feeling in your tummy when mm. something doesn't feel right, you know? And I truly like lead my day to day and my life with that gut feeling. And so if anything ever felt like, okay, this isn't going to work out or this doesn't feel right, I won't do it. But I think that a lot of entrepreneurs like really need to listen to that gut instinct. And when you feel like it's right in your gut, you know, that you're going to like be moving forward and making those right decisions. Is there anything you do? And the answer could be no to kind of like strengthen that, that intuition and trusting your gut. Cause I think a lot of people what I've been hearing, like just cannot trust their gut feelings. And they're like, I don't know if this is fear. I don't know what it is, but I, personally actually do really trust my gut and like know when mm -hmm. something's off. And I have like some spiritual practices that I believe help me kind of like tune into that. Is there anything you do that you think has led to just like having that strong intuition or you think it was just like your mom instilling that at a young age? I think it was instilling it at a young age for sure. Um, but I will say that there's certain parts of my life where even if I know something's not right, like this is separate from my business life. Like I, I would say in my personal life, I'm not as great as listening to my gut. And I feel like that might be maybe like lack of confidence or fear. Whereas in my business, because I guess I, I care so much about it that I'm like, I'm, I want to listen to that, you know, gut intuition. Um, but I would say there's nothing I really consciously practice except like just trusting it. And when something doesn't feel right and I follow through with it, I always try to take a moment to reflect on like, okay, you knew that this wasn't right. And you could hear that little voice in your head saying it wasn't right. 
Um, and so you should have, or you, next time, make sure to listen to that gut intuition. Something I also do, this might sound like kind of weird, but sometimes if I'm not sure, I'll ask myself the question in my head and just be like, okay, should I do, you know, X, Y, or Z? And if the voice immediately, if my own voice immediately in my head goes, no, don't do it, then I don't do it. And sometimes it's like talking to my gut, I guess. I guess that would be like talking to it and trying to work through those feelings internally. But most of the time in my business life, my gut is like, it just kind of works itself, you know? <laughs> well, I feel like you have the evidence to draw back on too, where you're like, I listened when something didn't feel right that time and look what came of it. So like, you can kind of yeah. draw back on that. Did you read untamed? No, but it's, it's sitting beside my bed. Okay. Should I, that's you, what, should that's I what she it? talks about okay. a lot is that she would just sit in a dark room and close her eyes and ask herself a question. And then like the answer would come. So I was curious yeah. if you got it from that. <laughs> I should be read curious, it. like people who are listening to this episode, like I, I would really encourage them to just ask themselves a, uh, themselves a question. And sometimes like the, my voice will literally be screaming at me. Like, don't mm -hmm. do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And I, I, I just, you have to listen to that. Well, sometimes we like, don't even give ourselves a chance. Like I know for me, I'm like, if I'm in the shower, I'm listening to a podcast. If I'm like, I'm always right. consuming content. And so right. if I didn't have like my 10 minutes that I meditate in the morning, I don't think I would have a second to even like ask myself a question Think about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Totally. Okay. I want to get into like the, the logistics and home decor before we get into home decor. I am really curious quickly just about the production of it all in terms of like, how are you not, how are you funding, but like, okay, people apply for a makeover and mm -hmm. then just gift the whole thing. Are you gifting all the furniture? Are the brands giving you, do you have a warehouse yeah. where like brands send you a million pieces of furniture and then you just gift it in your makeovers. <laughs> that's what I assume. No, but I love that. I love that. That's what you envision. That's, that's what I cool. assumed. <laughs> I thought you had like a warehouse yeah. where like Wayfair and West yeah. Elm and I article <laughs> is sending you like, like how I, a, a beauty influencer might get like foundations. I'm assuming they're sending yes. you like couches. I don't Sofas. Know. Yeah. yeah. No. So kind, so kind of, um, when I was working in publishing and, and creating this show, but also creating the magazine and the online content, um, I was making a ton of connections with brands. Okay. So, you know, PR reps and we would have coffee and there was a relationship there because when I was at the magazine, you know, these brands want their feet, their products featured. And so then when we moved into the video space, a lot of brands would be like, sure, we'll send you you know, this blanket to feature in this makeover, the, the videos at the time at Chatelaine were very, very, very small. They were like five minute videos. So there wasn't like sofas being brought in. And, um, because I had that name behind me, the brand of Chatelaine, you know, people were just like, sure, we'll send you whatever. And so when I got let go, that was one of the biggest things. Like, how am I actually going to make these makeovers come to life? You know, I can't buy a $3,000 sofa to put in this living room. Yeah. And I was really surprised at how many of the brands um, still sent me things to feature in my makeovers, even when they were getting like 2000 views a video, because I think that those relationships are so important early on. You know, it's like, don't underestimate the power of getting a coffee with someone or jumping on a video call with someone. Um, because these people trusted me and they were like, Oh, cool. She's on, she's out doing this on her own. Like we want to help her make that come to life. And so to answer your question now, the process is we work makeover by makeover. So we'll pick a space. We scout the space. We take measurements. I have a call with the recipient to understand their life and their space and what they want out of the makeover. And then we start to call in product from brands. So the benefit is that these videos get like 300,000 to a million views. And so a brand will want to send their product yeah. to get featured. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of how it works. So the product is sent to the makeovers home, the makeover okay. recipients home. So yeah. It's not in a warehouse. It's, <laughs> it's not in a warehouse. It's case by case. A, and they'll like send it to case. you for that room. Exactly. Got and it. we'll bring in a lot of our styling items, but that's kept in my studio. So, um, it's on like shelves and it, it it's, we have a little closet, but 
yeah, we don't keep sofas in our studio. <laughs> Did you ever consider at first just having people, I mean, that's not the premise of the segment, but did you ever consider just having people hire you like almost as an interior designer and filming yeah. it and having yeah. them pay you? That was one of the things that was really hard for me to work out as starting my starting my business because I, what was happening is I was charging people a very, very small fee to for me to make over their space. Um, but what was happening is it was turning into more of a consultation. And as a content creator, I didn't feel like I had that freedom to really creatively express myself because it was, yeah, it was difficult to be like, okay, but I know this isn't going to look good, but you're the client. So I have to, you know, I have yeah. to do what you want me to do in your space, but then I'm also creating a video out of it. And so I experimented for the first, I would say like year, some people would pay me a fee, other videos would be sponsored. It was kind of chaotic. Uh, and so I just realized that in order for me to have the most creative freedom, the client has to watch the videos and trust me and my team to make that vision come to life. But it was totally a growing pain, right? It was like trying all these different things and figuring it out. But I did realize early on that it just, it didn't make sense um, for people to pay for that service. Yeah. Cause in my mind, I'm like, you need to pay all these people to help you. Like yeah. why not just have, have them pay you. But that makes a lot of sense. Like you're filming yeah. a show. We're filming a show. And that was a transition of like trying to figure out, okay, am I, inter am I a designer? I'm not an interior designer, but like, am I a designer? Am I helping these people decorate their homes or am I an HGTV production? Um, and being a production just makes so much more sense. There's so many little things we could get into about like yeah, yeah, yeah. the actual makeover process, but yeah. I, I think that's a reason I love it though. I feel like it adds to the excitement of the show is like that it's fully gifted. And also the point of it is that we're helping people who are in tiny rental spaces. So they probably can't afford to pay thousands and thousands of dollars on top of the furniture and et cetera. So like it, it does make sense how you're doing it. But these were all the things that went through my mind at first. Yeah. Right? I'm like, wait, how am I going to get people to pay, you know, half their monthly rent to have me come in and make like, that doesn't make right. any sense. Right. But then I was also like, but I don't have any money to do this. So how right. do I do it? <laughs> well, you um, pulled it off. Early, <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's like, it's just, you just keep going and you just take a project and you run with it. It's so inspiring to me. Like it, it I honestly wish it I had is. a creative talent like that because it would be so much like it would be so much more fun to create a whole show around like a specific niche talent that you have. Like you're fully, it's so cool. You're literally HGTV you. like on YouTube. Thanks. It's amazing. <laughs> so the initial reason though I wanted to have you on, not knowing your story at the time, just from binging all of your videos and being obsessed and like using all your tips, I find that curating your space. It's almost like what they, what do they say? It's like clear space, clear mind. It's like, I was feeling like I was in such a dark, tiny dungeon. And then when I felt like empowered to kind of like take it into my own hands and be like, wait, if she could turn that like 10 foot kitchenette <laughs> into a gorgeous, like freaking garden, like I can do something <laughs> with my space. And it inspired me so much. I had like a lime washing paint fail. It doesn't even look like lime wash behind me, but I was still inspired to do it. And I, I'm going to go over it with another coat, but just like little <laughs> things like that, that I didn't realize I could do or ask my landlord yeah. if I could do in a rental space. But I kind of wanted to get into like, almost like your top tip for each room, if that makes sense. So I want to yeah, ask that you like, great. okay. So if we start with kitchen, like what is one decor or organization hack for a tiny rental kitchen? Just to clarify for everyone, she does like makeovers on tiny rental spaces. So these are things that anyone can get or do. So let's start with like someone has a tiny, tiny kitchen. What is like the first thing you'll look at? Okay. Let's do like a little bit of budget and then no budget at all. Go for so it. starting with no budget at all, simplest, easiest thing you can do is make a statement out of all of your dried goods. So like rice, beans, like, um, what else is dried, you know, whatever. Oats. Things. 
that you <laughs> oats yeah chia seeds all those things dried mangoes like snacks and stuff put them in glass jars you can get the glass jars from the dollar store uh, you can get them from ikea for really inexpensive and like line your counters with all of your dried things it like taking it out of the packaging makes a statement it adds color um, and just like looks really pretty so that's like the simplest no budget thing you could do if you have a little bit of budget um, peel and stick products in a kitchen are incredible. So peel and stick backsplash tiles. Um, you can even get peel and stick floor tiles if you have like outdated floors. And I'm a huge advocate for peel and stick products because they're waterproof, they're mold resistant, they're easy to clean, and they just like can transform your whole space. Okay. Amazing. Let's do tiny bathroom. Like their, their products are overflowing all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So no budget. Um, I would say in a bathroom, like just investing in really cute accessories for your sink top. Um, you can get things from home sense or like thrift things for, you know, no money at all. Um, if you have a bit of budget to spend, I would say invest in some containers like the home edit has amazing containers that I used in my bathroom and organize everything by groups, um, putting, you know, tucking things away in closed storage, also switching out knobs on your cabinet, on your cabinets in your bathroom, such a game changer costs like $3 a knob. You have a new cabinet. I added from Amazon. I just got like a peel and stick black hardware towel hanger for like Cute. above the toilet, like just little yeah. things like that, that I never thought of before. Yeah. Okay. Even like a cute hand towel, you know, like that yes. thing, that stuff can just make you feel better in your space. It feels homier too. That's yeah. what I did. I got like the black hardware for like less than $10. It looks really cool. It looks like they installed it here with like a cute, cute. hand towel over it. There's just like so many little Amazon <laughs> hacks, honestly, that you can do. Another one is putting your hand soap, like taking it out of the container and putting it in an amber apothecary jar. You can also get those on Amazon. They're like $5, I think, for a little soap pump. And it looks just cute. Love it. Okay. This is kind of like a, a bigger room, but like living room where we could do home office. Let's do living room. Like your living room is, because my last living room was my kitchen also, and it was absolutely tiny, like truly yeah tiny. Like I was like, I need Alexandra to fly in from New York to New York. Cause I don't know what to do. <laughs> so tiny, tiny living room. How do you make it feel just like a little more like you can breathe? Yeah. Paint. Like the power of paint is incredible. Even if your walls look white, they're probably not white. If you rent paint them white or paint an accent wall, um, a fun color, like just make your walls new again. If your walls are already white, paint them white again. A fresh coat of white paint does like total wonders for a space. Um, and lighting, lighting is so, so, so key. So I never turn on my overhead lights. There was a TikTok going around for a while. And I was like, that is me. Like we don't turn the overhead don't lights have on, mine on either. <laughs> I don't ever. And I use table lamps, floor lamps, like soft, moody lighting. Um, lighting affects our moods so much, even like the wattage of your light bulb. So if your light bulb skewing really blue, switch it out for something that's warmer. It's going to make a huge difference. Love that. Also at night, I have a $1 um, red light bulb from Amazon. And so at night, Cute. my whole room is red, like only at night. And so it's like a totally doesn't it different make you space. Feel, yeah. Doesn't it make you feel like cozy and like you're excited to be in the space? And you're like, it's time to wind down now. Yeah, you're, I have, you're like, you totally get it. <laughs> well, because I watched all your videos. I have the LED um, like yes. candles too. Yes. It helps me also just like I work from home. So I need to feel at night like I'm in a different space. Yeah, totally. I, okay. Yeah. Lastly, tiny bedroom. Okay. <laughs> I would say um, bedding, obviously. Like I really love using linen in a bedroom because it, feels soft. Um, once you wash it a few times, it gets really soft. It's casual. You don't have to like iron it or anything. It just looks like cozy and inviting and warm. And again, paint, um, same as the living room, like painting an accent wall in your space. Um, just like really leaning into the calm, like sereneness of it all. And for me, 
in our, in my partner and I's bedroom, like we don't have any of our work stuff. We don't have our laptops in there. It really, it's very not cluttered. We have a laundry basket and like our bed and that's it. And it just feels calm when you walk into it. So sometimes it's not even about buying stuff. It's just about, you know, clearing out your space and making it just minimal. I like that. Okay. Ending segment. Also just want to shout out, you sent me this gorgeous book and it's been in my media console (laughs) as like a little coffee table book sideways. And it it has like so many good tips in here. Like it's, (laughs) it's even more so than your YouTube channel, because like in your, on your, in your videos, it's like a specific style, which I love, but it's really cool when you're working on your own space to like look in this book and see specific paint colors, like different options. It's just, it's amazing. So I highly highly recommend everyone. Thanks. I wanted to put all those tips that I shout out often on my YouTube channel and just put them in one place. And the book is meant to be a resource when you're, you know, when you've just moved out of your house for the first time, but also when you're older and you've bought your first home and don't have a lot of budget to spend on a reno. No, it's perfect. I I'm obsessed with it. Okay. Thanks. Ending segments. Cause I usually don't record on zoom and I'm realizing we're being like counted down right now. <laughs> so uh, we could always re-enter, but top self-care tip. My top self-care tip. Um, okay. Oh my gosh. Ah, no, I'm like, it's counting me down. I have well, to we can always, re- we can always come back in <laughs> because this is stressful. <laughs> my, okay. No, I, I think my personally, my self-care tip is my top self-care tip is giving myself space away from social media, from my phone. I turn my phone on airplane mode every single night. So it won't ring in the middle of the night. It won't beep. And having that time to myself to read or um, just like hang out by myself without distraction um, is so beneficial for me, like taking a walk to my coffee shop and just seeing people there in the real world. Like, that to me is self-care. It's like simple, simple things and just turning off from all the distractions around us. Cause it gets crazy out there. I'm with you. Mine's on airplane mode yeah. every single night too. I, I, anytime yeah. I like do my coffee shop, walk, do a walk and I'm looking up, I'm, I'm like, wow, there's a whole other world out here. <laughs> totally. And it doesn't have to be for, you know, three hours. Sometimes for me, that just means like 20 minutes at the end of the day time for myself. Yeah. Okay. Number one, Amazon find knobs and, and, um, flush mount lighting. People, uh, don't realize that there's so many amazing flush mounts, which is like a ceiling light, um, for under a hundred dollars on Amazon. I'm going to look at game that. changer and knobs. Knobs are so inexpensive on Amazon. Yeah. I've never thought to like redo my knobs or like my outlet covers or anything like that. Yeah. Until, yeah. Simple brass knobs and outlet covers on Amazon. Okay wellness product you can't live without right now? Um, wellness product you can't live without right now is, uh, I don't know if you have this in the States, but it's called living libations and they're a small company and they make everything like by hand and it's a rose face mist and it literally makes my skin just glow. Oh, I love it. Also okay. water. <laughs> yeah. I drink a lot of water. <laughs> everyone can, everyone can access that hopefully. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> What is your favorite decor furniture piece that you have found recently, like in one of your makeovers that you still think about? Um, this light from Amazon or not from Amazon, this light from target, a floor lamp shaped like a flower. It's like a petal light. I don't know if they sell it anymore, but I, I have not stopped thinking about that light. Okay. Amazing. Where can the people find you, your book, (laughs) your channel? I'm at Alexandra Gator on all social platforms, YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest. Um, Yeah, just my name, Alexandra Gator. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. This was like, you were on my dream guest list. So thank you. Oh, thanks. Honestly, your questions were incredible. And I just, I love chatting with you. So thanks, Jeff. I want to be like best friends. 
Oh my God. Like we could talk about home decor all day. A dream. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you guys so much for listening to that episode. Please, please, please leave a five-star rating on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. If you just can't get enough of this podcast, go subscribe over on YouTube. You can see the full-length video episodes and shorter clips as well. You can find TikTok clips over at Jen Lauren with two N's. You can find Instagram Reels if that's your jam over on Instagram at Jen underscore Lauren with two N's and even Dare to Self Care Pod on Instagram. 